Um, no, three very good questions, uh, which are very welcome. And I, I think to address the, the friend from South Asia uh, and the, the friend from Yemen, um, I think if we look if we look at the focus of this entire forum, it's focused on solutions. And so what we've had the benefit of is is having examples of different solutions that have been working in practice. And so on the solutions platform for this particular session of practical implications of national policies, we had the benefit of, of, um, of I think over, over 35 uh, solutions from 20 countries. And I raise this point because we need to get beyond uh, the, some of these issues, uh, and we have been getting beyond some of these issues in the session that we had, for example, uh, we were able to go into uh, quite a bit of detail uh, on two very good examples where uh, water, there's uh, nine cubic meters of water being provided for free to those households who cannot pay, uh, which is the case of South Africa and the specific case of Durban. Uh, and, and this, but there's a recognition there. There's a recognition which is, uh, and this was part of the, the summary statement, uh, how affordable is affordable. Uh, up to what point do you provide uh, these types of facilities for those families that cannot afford uh, at the same level of other families uh, the, the, uh, the drinking water? And so those are, those are more nuanced and more specific questions that we're starting to encourage each of the sectors to really take into account. We have another example from, we had, we had another example that was discussed. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and your, uh, your questions, I think, would have been reflected in, in some of those examples. Another example discussed uh, from Portugal, uh, which was precisely focused on what ERSAD is doing to try to help its service providers and manage the percentage of household income that's being utilized for, for uh, drinking water. And so these are issues that are, these are solutions that are now being, uh, being commented, being discussed, and, and it's, it's very enriching to, to see what's happening in different parts of the world and in different regions, recognizing that there's certainly there are differences. And so recognizing that we do have to adjust and, and help each other by connecting uh, through these different solutions. In terms of the, the friend from Peru, uh, we, um, I would suggest, uh, rather than a personal definition, I would suggest um, that we start thinking about the, uh, the different dimensions of the human right to water, uh, which include certainly accessibility, affordability, availability, uh, safety, uh, and certainly equity and non-discrimination. Um, so if, if we start looking at w human right to water, how, how, we can, how we can achieve this through those different dimensions, I think we're already moving farther down the road in terms of, of, of how, we, how we achieve it. Uh, that call. Thank you. Je pense que les, les grands principes euh, de, du droit à l'eau sont plus ou moins repris dans, dans la déclaration des de Nations Unies, mais pour moi, c'est l'accès à l'eau et l'assainissement, c'est un service de base, et l'accès au service de base doit être garanti pour chaque individu de sorte à ce qu'il puisse s'épanouir de façon équitable. Bon, ce sont des principes qui, dans chacun des contextes, doivent être traduits, hein, parce qu'un épa épanouissement équitable réfère quand même à, à, à éviter certaines, certaines charges en termes de temps, en termes de sécurité, en termes de, euh, de pression économique ou, ou de dépenses financières. Et donc, c'est de, de diminuer tous ces différents facteurs de, de ralentissement ou, ou, ou de frein qui, qui, qui empêchent chacun des individus de s'épanouir de façon équitable. La deuxième question, enfin, ce n'était pas vraiment une question, c'était plutôt une remarque sur cette histoire de la corruption. Moi, encore une fois, donc, dans les pays où la responsabilité, la compétence de l'accès à l'eau et l'assainissement ressort de la compétence des, des collectivités locales et des acteurs locaux, pour moi, ça crée au moins une opportunité pour pour lancer ce dialogue entre les usagers et les parties qui sont concernées par la maîtrise d'ouvrage, par la propriété, par l'exploitation de ce service public, qui est beaucoup plus difficile à organiser à niveau national. Et en même temps, ça permet de créer un, un dialogue qui va plus loin 
entre les administrés et leurs administrateurs. Et quand on entre dans un processus de décentralisation, s'il n'y a pas une décentralisation concrète sur des choses très concrètes comme des services de proximité, il n'y aura jamais ce dialogue, il n'y aura, aura jamais des, des mécanismes de reddition de comptes qui nous permettent d'évoluer dans une gouvernance. Thank you. Uh, final word by François Major. Non, ce n'est pas, euh, pas un dernier mot. C'est une question à, à Glenn. Glenn, vous avez identifié des politiques qui ont euh, qui vont dans, son, dans le bon sens. Avez-vous pu identifier quelles sont les, les raisons pour lesquelles euh, ces, ces politiques ont été mises en place Pourquoi, par exemple, tout d'un coup, un gouvernement central inclut dans sa politique la voix des pauvres dans la zone rurale qui, dans son élection, ne dépend pas de ces pauvres non Et euh, la, si cette voix pour l'urbain, si pour l'urbain on comprend assez vite quand même que les, les urbains pauvres peuvent quand même faire entendre sa voix, euh, pour le rural dispersé, c'est plus compliqué. Est-ce que vous avez identifié des, des mécanismes qui ont forcé ou qui ont induit les autorités à prendre des décisions I, I think François and, and the chair is reminding me to, to keep this short, uh, but I think François, it's, it's, it's difficult to identify a, a mechanism or a, a, uh, uh, one example, um, precisely because there, it, it, it depends so much, so much on the cases and on the context. So, so I think what, what we were able to do was, was, was look at a few examples uh, of, of, uh, of uh, catalyzing moments. Um, but I, I'd, I'd like to put two, two ideas on the table. One is that this is continuous and this is long term. And so it's, it's, not, uh, uh, it's not overnight. Uh, the, certainly the examples, we had an example from Mexico uh, that we discussed in depth and, and Mexico's been working on this for, for at least 10 years uh, in terms of uh, improved water quality, which is one of the dimensions of the human right to water. In terms of the, the rural, which I think is, is a very valid point, I'm not sure we've gotten there anywhere. Uh, and if you look at certainly the data that we have from the JMP, uh, we're making progress in the easier to reach areas, in the higher income quintiles, um, but with this more sophisticated analysis, now the, the lowest uh, quintile, uh, we're recognizing the no, we're at The, the last mile in some cases, uh, and in that last mile are many of the rural areas. Thank you. We now move to the last part, the last uh, 